And the first thing on the agenda is uh, pretty much just the uh, announcement. So the Streams 042 release is now out, so you can uh, start upgrading. Uh, we have also the what's new video if you want to check the new features and uh, all the changes are as always listed on the GitHub release. So that was just a quick announcement. And uh, next, I guess we can move to some PRs and issues. Uh, so I added here two OAuth issues, which seem to be opened already for some time. Uh, Marco, how should we handle them? Oh, for this, I plan um, actually to take these suggestions from, and I have my own ideas and put them in another PR that will address the examples documentation. So should we close this PR and it will open a new one or should we keep it open until you open the other PR or? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Mm. I mean, as long as I can track it back, uh, I guess it can be closed. So yeah, I guess we can close it. Anyone else, anything to this or everyone's fine with it? Fine by me. Yay. And the second one is some dependency update to the test suite, which seems quite old as well. Yeah, these things keep on coming. Basically, from time to time, I run a sneak on the project, and uh, then it's usually the time where when I bump this. So, a lot of times these are like informative, like there is something there needs to check. Usually, I don't just merge this depend about proposals. So should we close it? Yeah, I think we can close it. Just one thing about the warning on the top of the PR, does it mean that uh, uh, it's already gone? Um, there was something about that uh, the Pendabot configuration is disabled for a while because uh, we didn't react on the proposed proposed changes by the Pendabot, so maybe we should double check that if everything is okay. So we have two things there. We have the
I think we have that enabled. Okay, maybe it was enabled when uh, when you react on the PR and the Panda bot itself uh, started working again. Or maybe it's just it was just a misunderstanding on my side. I don't know. I think it does this, but but it seems to be enabled in the in the settings. Yeah, in that case, it should be fine, I guess. Okay, the next two PRs which I added there are for the for the operator. So. This is actually related to some issue, which I think is a duplicate, but there's no description, no more communication from the author. Uh, and it doesn't seem to work. So I guess we should close this. Yeah, um, the whole idea, if I understood it correctly, it looks good to me, I think, but maybe it will need a proposal because the change will be a little bit complicated and I'm not sure if uh, this will handle just one specific case and maybe we should handle it more like uh, for more edge cases that uh, it could hit. I, To be honest, I don't think it handles the issue here. If I but just correct we, it, go on. I guess we will get back to it again in the triage, but but I don't see really how this would address the issue and the user basically ignored any questions or anything. So yeah, I completely agree. I was just, I just wanted to mention that uh, I like the idea about the status information about the problem with setting the dynamic configuration in Kafka. Sorry, which idea? I'm not sure if it, if it was mentioned here in the discussion, the PR, or it was mentioned in the linked issue you mentioned at the beginning. Yeah, maybe we should focus first on the PR itself because we will get the issue in the triage. Yeah, okay, so I agree with closing this one. Okay. Okay, the next one is about some change to the Kafka exporter dashboard. But apart from it changing the wrong file, I actually don't understand why this should be five minute, one minute and not five. So I guess if someone understands why it should be one minute and not five, then we can have a separate PR, but there wasn't anything with regards yeah, to the condition or to fixing the right files for several weeks. So I guess we should close this as well. Yeah, I agree. And to be honest, maybe I accidentally changed this value from one minute to five in, I don't know, several months ago when I did some migration of uh, Grafana dashboards to newer versions. But 
I'm not sure if I completely understand what exactly each chance. Uh, I think it depends on the configuration of Prometheus as well. And uh, if the Prom Prometheus itself scrapes data just uh, in, a, in a longer intervals than one minute, the, the graph itself looks strange. So maybe that was the reason why I changed it and I maybe forgot to remove it from this file. But it's something that uh, I will need to find out if I really did that or not. But I right, don't but think I... we... Yeah, go on. I guess the description says messages per second and this divided by 60 is probably related to that. So I guess we need to change it to one minute or change the 60 to five times 60. Maybe, I guess it's something I could take a look to see what uh, is the difference in, um, in the dashboard itself and then open the PR if needed on proper it's place. It's a shame someone opens a PR without ever replying to it and providing any explanation. So like this, does it make sense? Yeah. So please have a look at it. Anyone has any other PRs to raise or issues to discuss? If not, I guess we can get to the proposals. I think there are four proposals that had some updates or changes since last call. Uh, so this one is a new proposal uh, about how Streamzy might handle support for Kafka 4.0. Uh, so uh, yeah, if you haven't looked at it and reviewed it, please have a look and uh, yeah, comment or uh, approve or whatever uh, you feel about it. Then the next one is about managing the offsets in uh, Connect that's open for some time now, but we have now quite a lot of uh, approvals. Uh, so uh, please, if you have any comments or plan to review it, let me know by tomorrow or otherwise I will close it as approved as that's now stable for quite some time and has the needed votes. Then I guess another proposal which was substantially updated since the last call was is the one about the auto rebalancing on cluster scaling. So if you have any interest on that, please uh, yeah have a look at that as well. I think there are still open some open comments, but yeah, I think it's slowly getting to being approved as well. And then finally, this proposal about using cruise control to move data between two JBoard disks that got some updates as well. So again, if you are interested in this, please uh, have a look and comment or vote or 
whatever. Anyone has any other proposals or anything specific to one of these proposals uh, they want to discuss? Okay, hearing nobody, I guess the next thing on the agenda is the issue triage. So the first issue is around the craft migration. I think with Paolo, we found there some bugs and fixed them. I guess the last thing to decide is if you should do some special handling for when the user tries to do a migration with just one controller and using ephemeral storage, which has no chance to, to work. Anyone has any strong opinions on that? Yeah, it might be good to have some kind of warning in status. I mean, that doesn't really help much if you have warning in status, right? You still... Half of the people so, will anyway not read it. So you mean, have there some, have there a piece of code that will basically stop the migration at some point and raise error somewhere? I guess that's the option, yeah. Or to, I don't know. I think we have a lot of places where we say that the ephemeral storage should be used only for development and CIs and so on, so. Yeah, I agree that that's, that will basically just add additional piece of code that we will need to maintain and test. So have it in documentation seems to be better for me. So should we close it? Yeah, I, I'm I'm up for closing it. Anyone has any other thoughts on it or it seems Keith voted <laughs> thumbs up as well on uh, um, particip participant lists. Okay. I'm afraid Zoom doesn't make it easy to see these things when sharing the screen. Okay. Next issue is well optimizing example configurations for the for the metrics. Uh, so this is something I opened when I was updating the metrics for the JMX exporter 1.0.1, which kind of did a lot of changes to some of the metric names and so on, and I had to go through all of them. Uh, and what it seemed to me is that today we seem to export a huge amount of metrics, but only few of them seem to be actually used in the dashboards we provide. So a lot of them are kind of provided without any use. So the fault was that maybe someone who has a long time can try to go through it and try to remove from the metric configuration in the examples, the, the metrics which we don't seem to use to kind of reduce the amount of the metric which we are providing in the, in the Prometheus export and kind of 
push less data into the Prometheus clusters and so on, so that it better corresponds to what we are actually using in the in the dashboard. And of course, if someone would want to use these additional metrics, then they would still be able to edit the JMX Prometheus exporter configuration to add additional metrics, but they would basically not be there by default without any use. Anyone has any thoughts on that? Yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. Maybe we can also drop a sentence or something in the documentation if we don't have it. anything about the whole complete list of metrics yet. But I think we have their link to, to Kafka metrics or something like that. But yeah, reducing it in examples seems good to me. I just wondered, um, given that the Strumz metric repository is coming, do we want to make another change to the example metrics now? Or would it be better? I think the metrics reporter is planned for the release which has which moves to Kafka 3.0, if I remember rightly. So I just wonder whether it's worth waiting until that arrives and Zookeeper's gone and uh, avoiding the change. So even if the new metrics reporter is available at the time of Kafka 4.0, we will not be removing the JMX ex Prometheus exporter like we will keep that there for some time, at least for backwards compatibility reasons. Okay. So I think this might be still worth it. Okay. It okay, might fine. also make it easier to find out what are the metrics we care about for the new example configurations with the new reporter, maybe. Yeah, it's something we discussed in the last call. It's uh, basically said uh, uh, our I basically want to do this work on the new matrix reporter, and uh, I guess the goal will be to align both both example configurations, so you get the same set of configs roughly. Yeah. Okay. Fine. To be honest, I. Not sure if anyone is eager to jump into this issue anyway, because it will be terrible work. So maybe anyway, nobody implements it for another year, who knows? So maybe we can add help wanted to it. Yeah, why not? Okay. Next issue. Yeah, so this is kind of a race condition in uh, the Zookeeper cluster where if the pod restarts in a bad time during the scale down of the Zookeeper cluster, then it can run into this kind of weird race condition where the pod is crash looping but the operator is waiting for it to be ready just to scale it down. So the, the problem reported by the user can be reproduced, but when I was looking at the code, then kind of it seemed to me like there is no simple solution to this uh, in, the, in the code to handle it automatically. Uh, the workaround which the user can do is uh, fairly simple. The user can just scale the Zookeeper cluster back up to get the pods running and then scale it down again. Uh, it seems like a fairly rare situation because you need to have the pod restarted at the wrong time. And at the same time, you need to be scaling the Zookeeper cluster, which is not something what's completely common and happening five times per day. So given the fact that we are anyway going to remove Zookeeper support relatively soon, I guess, uh, I wonder if this is something what we should simply reject and not try to fix it anymore. Oh, 
makes complete sense to me, Jakob. Plus one. Yeah, same here. Okay. So the next issue is, so that's actually related to this. To this, uh, this PR we discussed earlier. So the problem is that some Kafka options have these kind of hidden dependencies where you can, for example, change the number of IO threads only within some constraints. And this makes it quite hard if you change it incorrectly, then it cannot be updated dynamically, but it cannot be updated uh, by restart either because of how the Kafka dynamic updates were designed. And uh, so it ends up kind of the, the broker basically restarting the pot in a loop until the user fix the configuration. So we already have an issue for this uh, raised originally by Luke. So I think this is a duplicate and we should keep the original issue for this. I think this use slightly different option, but yeah, it's always number of threads. Yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. Keep it uh, in the original one. I guess it would be good to come up with some solution, but there doesn't seem to be a simple solution. So, Another issue is about the monitoring of custom resources. Uh, so right now in the cluster operator, we provide these metrics which describe the state of the custom resources, whether the Kafka cluster is ready, whether Kafka Connect is ready and so on. But we don't support this in the user and topic operator. And there is actually a tool called cube state metrics, which is part of Kubernetes, which uh, is able to export these things as a Prometheus metrics for our custom resources. So the idea here was to maybe first introduce it maybe for the topic and users as some example in the metric examples. But yeah, maybe I thought that it might be interesting to replace the metrics in the cluster operator with that as well, because uh, to be honest, it's quite hard to implement the state 
of the resources in the operator and it makes some parts of the code quite uh, messy and challenging because you kind of need to keep the state and you need to keep the track when the resources are deleted and when the namespace is deleted and these things. So it's not completely, not always completely straightforward to maintain the code. So I actually think that using it, using the cube state metrics for it seems like quite nice thing but I'm not sure what others feel about it. And uh, yeah, I wonder if we should have some uh, some uh, more maintainers on the call to kind of have better consensus on this, or if it should have a proposal maybe or something like that. Yeah, I saw that Paolo had some doubt on, on the PR that uh add some examples about how this can be set up. Um, the whole idea looks good to me, but maybe as you mentioned, uh, having more maintainers here to agree if uh, we need a proposal or if uh, we actually want this sounds reasonable to me. But overall, it's look, look it looks good to me. So like this makes sense. Yeah. So I guess hopefully next time Paul and Luca should be back as well. So yeah, it seems Keat like it as well. <laughs> okay, the next one is about adding some progress state to the Kafka rebalance resource. Uh, I thought that was interesting, but to be honest, I uh, don't know what exactly does cruise control provide. And we also need to keep in mind that we want the rebalance to kind of update 10 times per second because of some progress in cruise control. So I think it would need to have some more considerations. And with Paolo, Kyle, Shubham, none of them being here, maybe we should again postpone this for the next call. Definitely, yes. Or to, I guess, Kyle won't be on the next one because the next one will be morning, but. Okay. Next one is. Yeah, so this is also cruise control. Maybe we should also leave it for next time. That's about the problem which the users who disable the security on the cruise control have because the topic operator doesn't work anymore. I guess that will also make sense with Paolo and so on. Yes. But overall, it looks kind of strange to me to completely disable uh, the security just to make the UI working. Um, Fede, go on. Uh, so we also suggest to use the send out mode deployment, which they can use to disable if they really need it. Uh, I don't know if this is fine for their needs, but that's an option.
Yeah, I mean, that's surely an option, but I think if that's our recommendation and if that's, if you don't want to make it work with the topic operator out of the box, we should probably also not cover in our documentation how to run cruise control without the security. Yes, yes, I agree. So I think we should kind of decide one way or another. Okay. Again, cruise control, again, leave it for the next time. Yes. Because I don't understand this one. I think this is just uh, some refactoring that Paolo wants to do because we do the same thing in two different ways. So we would like to be consistent and implement in the same way. Uh, specifically, it's the user task request. But, but we can leave it uh, for next time. Okay. Next one is from you, Federico. That's about the. Lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm planning to spend some time on this. It's on my backlog. Uh, I would like to look at it and see if we can make it. We can do some improvement to make it even more stable. But yeah. the flakiness is just when I run on. Sometimes when I run on my uh, local machine. Uh, but it's, it looks to be a little bit better on, on CI, but also there sometimes it, it fails. I think you, Jakub, uh, did uh, observe this. Yeah, it's from a quick look, it seemed like on the CI, it feels like once out of 20 runs, but mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully it failed for whatever reason more often, even with way more hardware than we have on Azure, which was a bit strange. Yeah. Yeah, that really seems to be related to the internal cluster model build, but we are not uh, sure of that. So I need, I need to spend some time playing with that uh, and see if, if I'm confirmed. Yeah, I think that simple change of the timeout for the test will resolve it. Mm -hmm. We should uh, understand what's, what's going on, just uh, not just uh, uh, without information, increase the timeouts. Yeah, 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 I completely agree on that. Okay, so we keep this one. Yes. And we remove the triage label, and I guess we don't add anything else if you plan to look at it, Federico, right? Okay. So next one, actually, that's not next one. This one is next one. So I think that's under discussion in the Kafka community right now, how to solve it. Uh, so this issue is about that craft expects us to unregister all nodes which are being removed from the cluster but it doesn't allow us to list these nodes. So uh, the simple implementation for just the scale down that is not reliable. And for the reliable implementation, we would either need Kafka to actually allow to query the registered nodes, or as an alternative, we can kind of store all the used node IDs in uh, the status of the Kafka CR and from there find out what should be unregistered on our own. I guess what we need to decide kind of is whether we want to wait for Kafka to fix this or whether we should work around it by using the Kafka custom resource to store the IDs. The thing is that if we work around it right now, then we are basically stuck with the API and it doesn't make much sense to replace it with the Kafka fix in the future. So I guess the question is, 
which way should we go? Maybe given there's some discussion around it in the Kafka community now, we can maybe postpone it until next time to see if we have a bit more clarity on when and how it might be addressed in Kafka. Yeah, I think it's the best we can do now. Uh, I think it's, it's, to me, that's a blocker for Kafka 3.9. I'm really, I'm really hoping we can get it fixed then. Uh, obviously, uh, people have to agree on that, but uh, yeah. We can wait uh, a couple of weeks, so probably we should have a better view by then. And I mean, great find. I mean, <laughs> everybody has missed that so far. Okay, so like this, I guess. Yeah. So next one is again cruise control. Funny enough that we have so many cruise control issues and the cruise control streams experts run away. Uh, so I actually played with, so the user is wondering why don't they support the recover attribution goal? I played with it a bit. It's not like we don't support it. It just doesn't seem to be enabled by default in Strimzy. And to me, it seemed like a bug because that seems like a useful goal, which should be available to the user without reconfiguring all the different goals and in the three different options. So maybe we can postpone it for next time, but it seems like something we should try to address. Yeah, I think that insight from Paolo would be useful here. Ah, stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, um, so support for Amazon MSK IAM, I think that's a duplicate of an issue which we already have uh, for it, so we can close it. Yes. Okay, another one. Uh, Jakub, I know you had some discussion on this with Luke. Yeah, uh, basically Luke suggests two things. Uh, the first one is uh, adding uh, a check to currently existing system test uh, that uh, test a vendor storage plugin to actually 
check if the messages are deleted from local storage from Kafka before we consume the messages to be sure that uh, the messages are fetched from uh, remote storage. Uh, this sounds reasonable to me, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to properly check that uh, the messages are removed from the local storage. Uh, if there is, if you have any idea how to properly do that, or I will sync with Luke tomorrow as well, that would be great. And then second thing was about, uh, I think it was about, uh, removing the messages and see if uh, the messages were removed from uh, remote storage as well that's something we are missing so i think this uh, this is something we need to add to this test and think about the the first option about checking the the existing messages on local storage so overall it seems reasonable to me and i will try to take a look on it Well, so checking if something is deleted in Kafka, it's uh, simple in the Kafka APIs. And we can produce some messages. You will know which offset you have produced. And then later on, when you expect message to be deleted, you can do fetch earliest offset. And it will use the uh, first of the available. And uh, that should be uh, the one after the last message you produced, if everything has been deleted. What's a bit more tricky is to check if things have been deleted in the remote storage. And in this case, you'll have to use the S3 or whatever backend we use APIs to, to do that. And you kind of have to know a bit about the format the plugin stores things in, like what sort of folders do you expect there. Uh, but the Kafka side should be uh, relatively easy to do. Yeah, okay. So I will try to take a look on it, and in case I will have some some issues with it, I will ping you. And sure. yeah, regarding regarding the the remote storage, it should be fairly easy. With uh, uh, we are using Minio in in the test, so it should be fairly easy to do that with uh, Minio client that is available on the pod. Okay, right. thanks. I guess you still need to know about the. Um storage formats used, like the folders and, and this, but yeah, it should, shouldn't be too bad. Okay. So the next issue is about allowing to mount trusted certificates from a config map. I don't know, it seems like secrets should be sufficient to me, but I saw that in some projects as well, that uh, uh, CA was part of config mag that, that was loaded to the pods, but it sounds to me that secret should be enough. Yeah, I mean, the trusted certificates are not super secure. Like, it's not private keys, right? So so I don't think the config map is a problem, strictly speaking, but I'm not sure, like, means a lot of additional testing and so on. Just for someone who wants to do it from config maps without having any actual reason why he cannot use secrets. Yeah, maybe we can wait until uh, the user will provide more information from his side and then decide. So should we say that unless there are some convincing reason why secrets cannot be used in some cases, then we will reject it. Yeah, sounds reasonable.
Ok. And I guess the last one is from Federico about the configuration of the check interval. Yeah, yeah. I think this is something you should not change uh, in production, maybe, but in some use cases, maybe well testing, low testing, stuff like that can be really useful. And uh, it's kind of weird that you have to go to config and when when there is now a actual API. I don't know what do you think is is it useful or not. But it's part of the proposal that it should be changed that the non-important options should be changed in the config section and not in the API. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know that, and I also voted for that. But uh, I, I discovered this in the context of some uh, testing that I was doing for the upcoming release or the new release of Swimzy. And in that context, I found that I needed to change that. I completely forgot that. I had to do that in the configuration, right? I mean, it's it's not something that, that, that you remember what's, what's the string that you actually have to use and then you, you need to go back to the documentation and we don't have this documentation. So you need to go to the plugin, read me and find out. So it was kind of uh, inconvenient, let me say. Uh, so so I thought that it would be useful to, to add this uh, configuration to the API. But it's not a common option, right? So that's kind of the point. Mm -hmm. so, so we should at least uh, add the documentation with uh, the configuration. So I think yeah. the documentation should say that additional options should be added in the Kafka config. I'm not sure we want to list all different options. Well, there are not that many. Uh, I think this one could be as I said, as I said, I, I, to discover that I need to to go to the readme of the plugin, uh, so it would be useful to at least add a line uh, or a note with that. So like this or? Yes, yes, fine. Thanks. Okay. And in triage documentation. Okay, and I think that's it for the triage cruise control only left anyone has any other issues they want to discuss uh just just one thing on the proposals Jakob. Um, yeah i intend to look at the offsets one first thing in the morning if that's okay yeah that's no that's definitely fine yeah, I was, just, I was just holding back a bit because it seemed like there was a question mark over it, but uh, yeah, I'll take a look at that then. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Anyone has any other business or anything else to discuss? If not, then... Uh... That's it for today. Uh, thanks everyone for joining and see you in two weeks. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you folks. Bye.